Hey everybody and welcome back to Laughing Willow Farms. Thanks for joining us. If you're new here, we're glad you're checking out our channel. If yep. you're returning, thank you for returning. Today we're going to talk about some of the ways that we like to naturally handle our mosquito and fly pressure. I hate mosquitoes. I hate flies. He hates flies. He's like a crazy old man when it comes to flies. <laughs> I got you this gun that shoots salt at flies oh, for yeah. Father's Day like two years ago. Shotgun. And you cool. thought that was like amazing. Yes. Hi Harold, you gonna make an appearance? So we're going to talk through some of the things that we used last year on the property that worked amazingly. We had tried other natural products in the past and last year we actually had really great success and we really shouldn't have because we had such weird weather in Texas yeah. last year. And we know a lot of people had a lot of difficulties. So I was really happy with what we did. We'll step it up a notch this year even because every year we learn a little bit more, but we'll walk you through what we do. We have two acres here. And so what we do works for the two acres we have. Mm -hmm. Now, three quarters of the acres are considered like our backyard and our garden space. And then the rest of it is for our pasture with the animals. So we do mainly just treat this front three quarters of an acre because that's where we're hanging out and playing and our kids yeah. are. But some of the things do serve the whole property. We're gonna walk through uh, a biopod. We'll explain that. We'll walk through these things right here, which are awesome. Cedar chips mm -hmm. for your lawn. And what's the fourth thing? We have a bat house. Yes, we've got a bat house. That's new though. So we don't know, but we're gonna tell you guys about it. We've researched it. It sounds kind of fun. We're really excited. Dynatrap. We got the Dynatrap when we first moved here. Mm -hmm. And then my last one, which we won't show you today because I don't need it quite yet, that's come and get it. And that's for fire ants. Fire ants are really bad around here. They get into my garden. They destroyed some of my plants last year. They're super frustrating. So you have to be on top of it and come and get it as a product that I use to stay on top of it. Always trying to eat everything. Why? Does it taste like you thought? No, it doesn't. Out. It doesn't taste like you thought. You were just curious. <laughs> Always at my butt, Harold. <laughs> also, if you find this video or any of our other videos helpful or enjoyable, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. It will help support our channel, which encourages us to continue making content to share with folks. Our goal is always to educate, empower, and inspire people to live a more holistic life. And um, that's one of the big reasons why we do this and so liking us supporting us helps us continue it today we're gonna do some homestead slash crunchy style pest control and yard work this thing's been sitting all winter i forgot to put the gas stabilization stuff in it so i did have it covered though until today so let's see if we can get it started <laughs> Yeah. Got enough gas in this thing? See how that worked. All right, while we're waiting on that, we're gonna set up our other lawn mowers. We've had three of our sheep and our buck in this area of the yard for about three days now. And they got it pretty good. Gonna have to trim some of that grass over there. But I'm gonna move them over here. All right, there we go. So I gotta go from this corner, cutting out my flower bed. I'll need to get another post and pull that up there or my goat will come through. Going all the way, so this whole new section will be new. See where we are on this thing. Okay, let's see. Something's up. Hey, sorry, I was ordering. 
I was trying to get the feed. Um, if I send you a picture, could you stop at an AutoZone or an O'Reilly's on the way back and get a lawnmower battery for me? Sure. Okay. Thanks. We're gonna hope this is the problem with the mower. <laughs> Alright, new batteries in. So you might be wondering why we went to the trouble of putting up fencing and putting our sheep in an area we were still gonna have to mow a little bit. There's three reasons. First off is feed. If you're working with a smaller amount of land and you wanna feed your animals for free, why not use every little bit of grass you have? Well, and reason number two is close. Um, they fertilize it. It's free natural fertilizer. Sheep pellets aren't like a huge mess, especially if you don't leave them somewhere for too long. And then the third is not only do they fertilize it, but they encourage the growth of better grass on the ground. Putting a ruminant animal on a patch of land encourages the growth of plants that that ruminant animal eats. So. Hopefully they'll get rid of the peskier weeds that we don't want. Cedar chips are amazing. They work really well. We use the spreader to put them out. Seems to do a great job keeping the bugs away. While Robert's spreading the cedar chips, I wanna talk a little bit about that because those have worked the best for us. We do have to apply them at least twice a year, so they do start to wear off a little bit, but that is the best way that we protect our area from not only the mosquitoes, they help a lot with that, and the ants, but it also is big for tick and flea, which is huge for our animals, and then of course, tick is really big for us. I actually have Lyme, and so, being aware of ticks in our area is really big for us and the cedar side is the best way. It's really easy to do. So you really just want to mow your area first and then you use a spreader to spread the big bag of cedar chips as far as you can. Um, it usually covers at least an acre for us and then after that I do any of the extra in the garden to just help with any pest control in the garden. All right so next up we've been talking about this for a bit. We got a bat house. Got it off Etsy. This is the shop name, Sunny Tings. Looks like a great house, had some good reviews. So how to have a successful bat house. Patience is a must, it may take up to two years for the bats to decide to occupy a house, that sucks. So based on that info, I think we're gonna put it probably right up there. 10, 12 feet off the ground, south, southeast. It's a decent amount of sunlight during the summer probably the closest to what they're asking for that I have. I'm assuming I'd get in trouble for putting it on there. There we go, got this all painted black. All right, there it is. We'll watch the sun as we get into summer and see if I need to move it around. It's pretty easy to hang just three screws. So I'm told you can know if they're occupying a bat house by seeing droppings underneath, so we'll watch for those. And if anybody knows how to attract them faster, you can leave it in the comments below. I'm sure there's like a whistle or a scent or something. But supposedly they're great for mosquitoes and other bugs. This right here is the Spartan mosquito. It's basically a tube that you add warm water to. You cannot use it until it gets relatively warm outside. And this will cover an acre is what it says. So again, this won't really take care of our back pasture, but this will take care of the area that we and our animals spend the most time in. Where do you wanna hang it? Here. You wanna hang it here? Hang it right there? Okay, great. So Let's you can see where we're going to hang our next one in comparison to our house. So once you fill it with water, the screws on the top. And this goes over here over whatever you're gonna hang it. I'm gonna hang it over a tree branch. I'm gonna put it on after I get it. 
Yeah, and you do want to have it out of reach of children, so you do want to make sure that it's tall enough where your animals and your kids can't reach up and get it. If that's tall enough, our goats can't get it. And then the second one, you want to hang separately. I will say that we use this product alone whenever we lived in the city for our like eighth of an acre, and it worked perfectly. This kept all mosquitoes away, but it did not keep flies away. No more than 180 feet apart. You want to hang it out in your garden? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So the second one here is going to go in this cedar tree by my garden. There we have it. And the other one is on this tree now. So we had used the Spartan at our previous house in the city, and when we moved here, we really wanted to take care of the mosquitoes, especially. So we did some research and we found the Dynatrap. And they have options that don't include large amounts of chemicals. So we got this right here, and this is good for, I believe it's an acre and a half. So we have it obviously on the front half of our property. The container at the bottom you can remove and dump out the dead bugs and there's a light at the top that attracts them and it sucks them down in into that container. And it worked pretty well. Um, it took a little bit of time because we started late um, but it also they also come with uh, granules. You can get granules to put down that catch the larva and then it also comes with these little bags that you can throw in any standing bodies of water. For instance we have an old well and we have a pond at the back of our property, so I tossed one in each of those. So the reason that it didn't work really well for us the first time is we didn't start out the cycle properly. So as Robert mentioned, we got it later on in the season, and when you start the process too late, it's not able to catch the beginning of the life cycle, and so it doesn't work as well. So a tip would be you do want to get them early, yeah. and you want to start it early in the year, and you want to do the whole process in order for it to help. So the second year, we did do the whole process, and it did help a lot. Of course, we did all the other things we've mentioned as well on this video, but I do think that it helps. I mean, we've had it running this whole time, starting in, what, March? Yeah. And we haven't had an issue yet. So I do think it's helped because today's the first day that we're putting anything out and we're here in mid-April. Yeah. Usually we already have mosquitoes. So it's definitely helping, yeah. but you do want to start early. All right, next up is our biopod. We saw this demoed at our friend's homestead down the street, Savvy Organics Farm. You can find their channel on YouTube as well. They've been doing this way longer than us and have a ton of great info. But they have one of these and it uses black soldier flies to create larvae. And then you can use those larvae to feed your chickens. You're supposed to set it kind of under a tree in an area that won't bother you because it stinks a little bit so i'm thinking i'm thinking right over here is fine we can always move it if we need to but we don't usually hang out right here so we'll see how bad it stinks all right i'll link this where i got this below biopod you can build these yourself as well if you would like to you do need a large amount of coffee grounds to start it up this one that kind of already comes built. So there's our quick start guide. Now the great thing about this is the black soldier flies that utilize this, whose larva we're after, also eat pesky flies. So that's why we're hoping it's part of our pest control system this year. So here it is. It goes on here like this. And then your little larva container slides onto the back right here. Pop this off and our friends over at Savvy Organics said this gets quarter to a half full in the summer. This is a pretty big container of larva. So there's a little drainage system at the bottom of this so you can get compost tea out of, which is pretty cool. I do about this. Feeding chickens gets expensive. You can feed them table scraps, but if you have a large flock of chickens, you know, you can only give them so much. All right, so you put this little perforated plate in the bottom once you have the drainage. We put our moist piece of mesh pad down. Now we're going to put um, a few pounds of moist coffee grounds in there as well. Like it says you want these moist and not dry. 
you know, cover the pad with that. And the next thing it says to do is soak pet food in warm water for an hour and mix that in with this and then we'll kind of mound it all in the center and then cover it with a piece of burlap. Put the lid on and we're ready to go. It's a very delicious soaked pet kibble. You know it smells like death when it sits for a while? This stuff. Coffee and dog food. Delicious. So after we mix it, we're kind of supposed to mound it. This gives the flies a place to lay their larva. And then we take a piece of burlap and drape it over the top, which I'm gonna have to cut a piece. There we go. Food underneath in the mound. Burlap over the top. So the science behind this, just in case anybody is curious, once the black soldier flies come in here and lay their larva underneath this burlap, when they hatch, they have an instinct that makes them want to climb. And so they climb up these little ramps on the side. And then there's a little slot right here, and that dumps them right into the container that we take off. All right, there we go. I went with a little folding table just because it's a little easier to get the larva container off, but there's the compost tea spout. Here's your access lid for things you want to put in. You can take this bungee cord off. Uh, that's another thing David at Savvy did just to keep this from blowing off or anything if it gets windy. And then when you want to collect your grubs, this thing pops right off the end. You empty it, put it back on. So we know this information will be valuable to anybody who sees it because yeah. we spent so many years and hours trying things, researching things to figure out what we could use that was natural, that wasn't going to hurt us, wasn't going to hurt our animals or our plants. And this is something we finally figured out to work for us and our just really annoying pests that we have, especially those ants and those mosquitoes, which I know bother a lot of people. I'm sure it depends on what area someone lives in, but for us, those are the biggest for us every year. And it has been so nice to figure out something that works so we can enjoy our backyard. There are other options that work great, but when you start looking into the ingredients, all of them are like big cancer chemicals. Yeah. And so that's kind of why we went with the combination of stuff that we did. We want to be able to walk in the grass and run around without breathing in death. Yeah, toxins. And, yeah. and then on the other side of it, run around and play and be in the grass without being bitten to death, yeah. you know? So um, these things have worked really well. And the really cedar well. smells amazing. Yeah, the cedar always smells so good. You walk outside, you're like, yeah. And there's different levels of cost and what you want to invest every year and what's worth it. So thanks for hanging out with us and until next time. See ya.